conditions for parallelograms, and we have five theorems. This is 6.3a with six previous videos for chapter six that are in the geometry playlist. We've learned to identify the properties of a parallelogram. Now we'll look at the properties of a quadrilateral to see if the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. And to do this, we can use the definition of a parallelogram or the five theorems from this lesson. Now, in the two previous videos, 6.2a and 6.2b, we used properties of a parallelogram. Now we'll work with the converse situation. We'll determine if a quadrilateral with certain properties is a parallelogram. So in those previous two videos, we said if it's a parallelogram, then it's got those properties. Now in this video and the next one, we're going to say if it's got those properties, then it's a parallelogram. Okay? So if you remember what those properties are, it was the opposite sides are parallel, the opposite sides are congruent, the opposite angles are congruent, consecutive angles are supplementary, and the diagonals bisect each other. This is the definition and the four theorems from the previous videos, and parallelograms must have one of these conditions. So, conditions for parallelograms, here's our first theorem. If one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are parallel and congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. We can write this in geometric notation as quadrilateral with pair of opposite sides, parallel congruent, therefore parallelogram. Here's our second one. If both pairs of opposite sides, so these and these, of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. We can write it in geometric notation for a proof as quadrilateral with opposite sides congruent, therefore parallelogram. Number three, if both pairs of opposite angles of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. We can write that in geometric notation for a proof as quadrilateral with opposite angles congruent, therefore parallelogram. And pay attention to key words in these theorems like opposite, parallel, congruent. You want to make sure that you understand the theorem and you don't mistake it, okay? It's got to be opposite angles, all right? Here's our fourth one. It says, if an angle of a quadrilateral is supplementary to both its consecutive angles, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So A and B together will be 180. B and C together will be 180. C and D will be 180. And D and A will be 180. See? They're supp supplementary and consecutive. All right? We can write this in geometric notation as quadrilateral with angle supplement to cons for consecutive angles, therefore parallelogram, okay? Here's our fifth and last one. If the diagonals of a quadrilateral bisect each other, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. We have bisecting diagonals, and remember bisect means it cuts it right dead center in half, okay? That's why these two segments are congruent and these two segments are congruent, all right? And geometric notation would be quadrilateral with diagonals bisecting each other, therefore parallelogram. And when we're proving that a figure in the coordinate plane is a parallelogram, make sure to plot the points first so the order of the vertices will be obvious. This will help us so we won't confuse the diagonals with the sides. Okay, so plot the points first. So here we have a proof for theorem 6.3.1. And take a look at this. We have two congruent lines right here, and they're parallel, aren't they? And we have a diagonal with angles 1, 3, 4, and 2 here. So it's given that KL is parallel to MJ, and KL is congruent to MJ. We see the parallel and congruent marks. We need to prove that JKLM is a parallelogram. So now we have a paragraph proof. So remember, my reasons are in brown, okay? So that helps you. It is given that segment KL is congruent to segment MJ. And since segment KL is parallel to segment MJ, angles 1 and 2 are congruent. If KL and 
J, M, J are parallel to each other, the, we can look at J, L as a transversal, can't we? And then angle 1 and angle 2 would be alternate interior angles. So 1 and 2 are congruent to each other by the alternate interior angles theorem. And by the reflexive property of congruence, J, L is congruent to J, L. The hypotenuse J, L for this triangle is congruent to the hypotenuse J, L for that triangle, okay? So triangle J, K, L is congruent to triangle LMJ by side, angle, side. We've got the hypotenuse as a side, we've got that as a side, and we've got these alternate interior angles as an angle, don't we? So that's SAS. And by CPCTC, congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent, angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. And JK, this one, is parallel to LM, this one, by the converse of the alternate interior angles theorem. And since the opposite sides of JKLM are parallel, JKLM is a parallelogram by definition. So remember, in our first theorem, it said one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are parallel and congruent. And that's what we had, okay? So it is a parallelogram, all right? Parallel and congruent. This is applying conditions for parallelograms. We can determine if each quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So look at this one. It says this length is the same as this length, and this line is parallel to this line, but it's not. If you look at it carefully, they may be parallel, but this one's a little bit longer because this is opening right here more. It's kind of going like that, see? And it's very hard to see. But we can tell by our marks that these are not parallel and these are not congruent. See? One pair of opposite sides are parallel, but a different pair of opposite sides are congruent. So it doesn't meet the conditions for a parallelogram. It said in that first theorem that the opposite sides are parallel and congruent, okay? And for this one, the diagonals bisect each other, so yes, it is a parallelogram by theorem 6.3.5 the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. They have, the diagonals have to bisect each other. And we know they're bisecting each other perfectly because these are congruent and these are congruent. So it's dead center, isn't it? Here's verifying figures are parallelograms. We're gonna show that ABCD is a parallelogram for X is equal to seven and Y is equal to four. So we can see ABCD and we can see each side is an algebraic expression, but it's giving us what their values are. All we have to do is substitute these values into these expressions and we know their lengths, right? So BC is X plus 14, X is a seven. So we have seven plus 14, which is a 21. DA is a three X, so that's three times seven, that's a 21. Yep, they're the same. Then we find A, B, and C, D. A, B is five Y minus four and Y is a four. So we've got five times four minus four, which is a 16. And this CD is a 2Y plus 8, so that's 2 times 4 plus 8, which is a 16. And since BC is equal to DA and AB is equal to CD, ABCD is a parallelogram by theorem 6.3.2, which says both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent. Okay, then it's a parallelogram. Now look at this diagram. We've got three angle measures as algebraic expressions, and it gives us what Z and W are as values. So we have Z is 11 and W is 4.5. First we find the measure of angle F, that's 9Z plus 19, which is 9 times 11 plus 19, which is 118 degrees. Measure of angle H, down here, is 11Z minus 3, so that's 11 times 11 minus 3, which is 118. So look, the opposite angles are congruent, aren't they? And the measure of angle G is 14W minus 1, and W is equal to 4.5, so 14 times 4.5 minus 1 is 62 degrees. Now look, this 118 plus a 62 is equal to 180 degrees, and angle G is supplementary to both F and H. See? This angle measure is supplementary to both of these. So EFGH is a parallelogram by theorem 6.3.4, which says if an angle 
of a quadrilateral is supplementary to both its consecutive angles, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram, okay? All right, our next lesson is the second part of 6.3b. We're going to be proving parallelograms in the coordinate plane, and then we'll move on to 6.4. So I hope you were able to write these theorems down in your theorem notebook if you need them because they're going to be helpful for proofs, aren't they? Have a great day. I hope you're doing well, as I always say, and I'll see you next time, and please hit the like button. Bye.